Good morning and welcome to this time of prayer and reflection on Pentecost Sunday. My name's Richard Snow. I'm one of the ministry team serving the churches in and around Kirby Lonsdale. Our sermon this morning is given by Reverend Dr. Emma Ineson, the Bishop of Penrith, and she's recorded something specially for the churches in our county to use on this festival day. Back on Easter Day, we began our service lighting the Paschal candle, celebrating the risen Lord, surrounded here by 11 other candles representing our 11 churches and their diverse communities, almost as diverse as those different groups we read of in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, who'd gathered in Jerusalem for the Pentecost festival. Under normal circumstances, the Paschal candle would be lit for each of the services in the weeks following Easter Day, reminding us of the Lord's presence with us. And then at the end of the service on Pentecost Sunday, it's extinguished. But not before every person in the church has lit their own individual candle from it. As a prayer, come Holy Spirit, Come rest upon us, like those tongues of flame rested upon the disciples on that first Pentecost. And also a reminder of God's promise that the Holy Spirit would be poured out on all people. And a reminder that we, the Church, are the new community of the Spirit. So at the end of our time of reflection and prayer this morning, There'll be a moment when we can light a candle in our own homes, as if we were together, lighting our candles from the Paschal candle here. A prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. So you might like to make sure that you've got a candle and some matches ready. Pentecost. Tongues of flame. The rushing wind. Chris is going to tell us about something that we can make, which has a connection with the tongues of flame and the wind. And after that, we'll hear our Pentecost reading. Happy Pentecost. Whether young or young at heart, you can make your own Pentecost spinner. It's really easy. All you need is a piece of flame coloured or plain paper and a paper clip. You can use any of the templates on the internet that say they're for paper helicopters. It'll show you where to cut and fold. And within a couple of minutes, you too can have a Pentecost spinner to take outside and enjoy. Happy Pentecost. Our reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Did divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Language is important. Before I wore a dog collar, I used to teach and study language. In fact, one of my earliest jobs was working for a company that produced dictionaries. And one of the things I know from that time is that words and language and the way we use them shape and form the way we see the world. And some words give us great insight into the cultures that they come from. For instance, did you know that there's a Japanese word for the way sunlight filters through the leaves of the trees? or the Finnish word for the distance a reindeer can travel before it needs a rest. Or the Italian word for being moved to tears by a really good story. Or the Swedish word for a third cup of coffee. Language is powerful. You only have to look at the pages of scripture to see how powerful language can be. God created the world by speaking it into being. Let there be light, he said and there was. 
And all through the Bible, God's word does things as well as says things. So Psalm 107 says this, he sent forth his word and healed them. Psalm 147 says he hurls down hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends forth his word and melts them. Sounds a bit like Cumbrian weather to me. But language is powerful. God's words are powerful. And when God sent his son Jesus, he wasn't called the thought or the concept or the idea, but the word made flesh. Language does things, you see. Recently, around the commemorations for VE Day, I was delighted to see that the BBC was showing my favourite film, The Darkest Hour. And it stars Gary Oldman, and it's all about Winston Churchill in his early days of Prime Minister at the start of the Second World War. And it's a film all about words and their power to change the course of history. The film shows Churchill wrestling with words and how to express himself to inspire and change the hearts of the British people. And one of my favourite moments in the film is when Churchill delivers his rousing we shall fight them on the beaches speech in Parliament. And after that, Lord Halifax turns to his neighbour and says, he has just mobilised the English language and sent it into battle. And throughout history, language has been used to change the world, both for good and for ill. Language has been used to identify people, to mark out boundaries, to oppress some and liberate others. My family's from Wales. This is my Welsh family Bible. And there was a time in the 19th century in Wales where if a child was caught speaking Welsh in school, a shaming sign was hung around their neck saying Welsh not, because English was considered the appropriate language for education. And that damaging policy has effects that are seen in Wales still today. So language can destroy as well as build up, alienate as well as reconcile, tear down as well as gather up, mislead as well as inspire. So I wonder what God was up to on that first Pentecost, when as a sign of the coming Holy Spirit, the people spoke in different languages. Let's think about it. Those first disciples had been through a series of traumatic events. They'd seen Jesus crucified. They'd rejoiced at his resurrection. They'd witnessed his ascension. And there they were in the upper room in the city of Jerusalem, waiting until lockdown was lifted. And on that day, all God's ancient prophecies were fulfilled and down came the fire of the Holy Spirit with a loud sound which filled the entire house. Now, not surprisingly, people gathered around to see what was going on. Well, you would, wouldn't you? And they were people from all over the world, from different cultures. Some of them visitors to the city of Jerusalem and they found themselves addressed in their own languages. Aren't all these Galileans, they said to each other? How come we're hearing them talk in our different various mother tongues? And there's a long list of the languages that they suddenly began to speak in Acts 2. The languages of the Parthians, the Medes and Elamites, Mesopotamia and Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and converts, people from Crete and those who spoke Arabic, and all of them said to each other, they're speaking our languages, describing God's deeds of power. Somebody has said that the real miracle of Pentecost is not so much a miracle of speaking, but a miracle of hearing. That the good news was heard and understood in the mother tongue of each one who gathered there that day. And from that point, the Christians went out and spoke boldly about God's deeds. They saw him change and transform individual lives and whole communities, bringing hope 
and healing and wholeness. But have you ever wondered why they spoke so many different languages? If you think about it, if God had just wanted the people gathered around to understand what was being said, why didn't he simply make everyone speak and understand the same language? He could have done that. Why all the different languages? One of the things that Pentecost tells us is that the new community of the Spirit that we now call the Church involves everyone and transcends barriers of race, nationality and language. Everyone hears God's work spoken about in their own language and that's significant. When God comes with his Holy Spirit to set the church on fire, he doesn't call us each to speak in the same way or with the same language or to do church in the same way or to like the same things or be exactly the same as each other. The story of Pentecost tells us that everyone is welcome. Whatever language you speak, wherever you're from, whatever your story, the church in Cumbria has not been closed for the last eight weeks, but it has been different. There's been a multicoloured variety in the ways the church has expressed its faith. In online services, in dial-up prayers, in videos and Zoom meetings, in community building and small acts of kindness, in neighbourliness, in people caring for each other, in food banks providing support for those who are struggling in prayers and appreciation for our key workers. And in all of these ways, we've seen God at work. But now, as we begin to think in due course about opening up our church buildings and shooing away the pigeons and cranking up the church organ and dusting off the bells, I'd love to see our church keep hold of that variety and creativity that we found in these days and the connections we've made between church and home, sacred and secular, spirituality and everyday life. Acts 2 tells us that the earliest churches met in homes and in the public worship spaces, and that both were important. So this Pentecost, Let's receive again the Holy Spirit of God who Jesus has breathed on us while we've been in lockdown. We need that Holy Spirit to fill all our communications and our language and to help us to speak boldly of the good news of Jesus in Carlisle and Kendall and Barrow and Workington and in the lakes and in our streets and in our towns and our villages and our communities and to the ends of the earth. And to do that, we'll need the language that each one of us speaks. Probably not Mesopotamian or Judean or Cappadocian, although you never know, or Welsh or French, although maybe, but the languages of city and country, the language of commerce and of law, the language of politics and teaching and medicine, the language of care homes and farming and tourism, the language of administration, parenting, the languages of music, sport and industry. We need everyone and all of our languages and ways of speaking so that everyone will hear of the marvellous deeds of God who lives and loves and sends and equips and comforts and heals. When God promises I will pour out my spirit on all people, this is not just a trickle on a few people. God wants to open the floodgates of heaven upon all of us. God will empower us and give us what we need, more than we need. So let's ask God to fill us again today with his Spirit's fire and let's live differently tomorrow because of it. Rise up, church in Cumbria. You have been filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit of God to speak boldly in many tongues about God's marvellous deeds. What began at Pentecost continues here today. God calls us to join with him in mobilising all of our different lives, fired and inspired by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
to change the world one day at a time. I invite you, wherever you are, to put out your hands and pray that most ancient of prayers. Come, Holy Spirit. And I've invited some of my friends from around the world to pray that prayer with us. Come, Holy Spirit. Przyjdź, Duchu Święty. Come, Holy Spirit. Duch, Asprid Sanctai. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Kujo, Rohom Takatifu. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Eruho Rodo Spia. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Pavitra Atma. Oh. Come, Holy Spirit. Przyjdź, Duchu Święty. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Espiritu Santo. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Aunos Pavitra Atma. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Ven, Espíritu Santo. Come, then, Helige Ande. Come, Helion. Come, Holy Spirit. Turn Pratwinyanha. Savenit des Fund. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Pakru O. Little banal do Maluika. Ku opne Mahayon. Santa Hella Laina. Nama the Rohar Podus. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 Central Park, New York. Spirit Santo. Ben. Come, Holy Spirit. Yiza Moya. O Ying Wele. Come, Holy Spirit. Duch Svetoi, Bridi. Vem, Espírito Santo. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 Roho Takatifu Wamungu Jo. Roho Takatifu Wamungu Jo. It's such a joy that we can all join together in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we offer you our prayers for others this Pentecost morning as we celebrate your Holy Spirit breathing life into the dormant gifts in your disciples, enabling them to speak out and to demonstrate the vastness of your love. We pray for those who are grieving, those mourning the loss of a loved one, those missing the touch of family, those facing the loss of dreams and plans, those grappling with changes in their financial circumstances, 
and we ask that your comfort, strength and love be a very present reality for them. We pray for those we know and those known only to you who are ill, lonely or anxious. Asking for healing and that they may be made very aware of your profound peace. We say thank you for the way communities and villages in so many places have come together and work to support those needing a little extra help. We pray for our government and all those who hold positions of power and authority, that they would work together, not squabble and blame each other. May your Holy Spirit guide their decision making, giving them discernment and wisdom as a way forward is planned for and implemented. And finally, we pray again for the coming of your upside down kingdom, where the poor and disadvantaged are those who are blessed with abundant life, where your justice and mercy are known throughout the world and where all people know the redeeming, conquering love of our Lord Jesus Christ. As your Holy Spirit empowered the first disciples to tell stories of Jesus to everyone they met, so may we be open to the Spirit's promptings and power that we too may share our stories of what God through Christ has done for us. Amen. Over the last few days, different people from around our churches have been recording a video of themselves, lighting a candle in their own homes. So if you have a candle ready, please join with them now in lighting it as a prayer. Come Holy Spirit, fill us again with your light and your life. A prayer for ourselves, a prayer for our churches, a prayer for our communities. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now our hymn, which includes a wonderful prayer that God may breathe his spirit upon us and finish his new creation.
set liberty Come almighty to deliver Let us all thy life receive Suddenly return days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. With Pentecost dawns the age of the spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and forever. And may God's blessing, the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain upon each one of us, upon our communities and upon all those for whom we have prayed now and always. Amen. Change from glory.